One actor with many talents and accolades, Albert Finney was a strong force in the entertainment scene through his decades of an energetic and ever-busy movie career. A man that turned down a knighthood, criticised the system and had five Oscar nominees but never attended its ceremony and was never given a medal. Of course, the no-nonsense actor he is, with vocal opposition to the glitz and glamour that accompanied the industry he served. Why was Albert Finney extra choosy about his roles? Albert Finney was a rare icon, a man of great vigour and talent, a wonderful performer and one of the most legendary stage geniuses that history has ever produced. Yet he was able to manage his fame and avoided Hollywood glamour for over half a century, despite international fame. This British talent hit international fame with his starring roles in classic movies, including the more recent Erin Brockovich. He enjoyed decades of marathon fame after he became a movie sensation in 1963, with the title role of Tom Jones. A man of strong character he is. Albert Finney was remarkably reported to have turned down a request to be consecrated British Order of Knighthood, criticising the system he described as perpetuating snobbery. With a reputation as a no-nonsense actor, Albert Finney got nominated for five different Oscars. He made known his distaste for the glitz and glamour that accompanied the awards and never bothered himself attending any of the ceremonies and did not win any either. He never took home a trophy, nor did he ever attend any of the award ceremonies that he was supposed to attend. Although his Tom Jones film role was a huge breakthrough movie, he has also been famously praised for his roles in Murder on the Orient Express, The Dresser and Under the Volcano, all of which earned him an Oscar nomination. During his very fruitful career, Albert Finney turned down several juicy roles that other great actors would jump on at the slightest opportunity. Critics say he succeeded on his terms and may have preferred theatre over movies when so many of his generation of actors had settled for the usual movie fame and fortune that is assured in Hollywood. I particularly like the strong drive that defines the self-assured working-class character that Albert Finney displays throughout his career. His versatility of talent is what Finney displayed when he depicted Pope John Paul II, Winston Churchill, a Southern American lawyer, an Irish gangster, plus an 18th century scoundrel, and others. All of which was expertly interpreted, he was never pigeonholed in any role, because he carefully chose them the way he wanted, over the years. Perhaps he was not comfortable stagnating in one typecast, the reason he changes character type regularly. One time Albert was doing Shakespeare and other times was involved in musicals or still showing in the title role as seen in Scrooge and Daddy Warbucks in Annie. I heard that Finney refused to play a role in The Death on the Nile and Peter Ustinoff was cast. Albert Finney was greeted as the King of Kitchen Sink and profoundly celebrated as an acting genius. He was described by a writer as a chameleon in films owing to his career dynamics and the ease with which he switches from one area to another. Having done several television roles, Finney made his first big screen appearance in the drama film The Entertainer, as directed by Tony Richardson. It is in the spirit of a job well done that members of the Hollywood Foreign Press Association acknowledged Albert Finney's creativity when they elected him a co-winner of the most promising newcomer, Male. Born in Salford, Lancashire, Finney's parents, Alice and Albert Finney, did their best to position him for greatness. After primary education at Tootle Drive, then at Salford Grammar School, and subsequently the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art, where he groomed his talent before entering the industry. The descendant of a bookmaker, he is, growing up in northern England on the outskirts of Manchester, was not easy. But Finney, like most kids with working-class roots, took his destiny into his hand when he became inspired to go into the movie world. He took to the stage at an early age, appearing in several school plays despite not having any connection. Of course, his talent made a way for him. The headmaster of his school, identified as Eric Sims, was said to have noticed his talent earlier and advised him to attend the celebrated drama school. It is possible that Finney's restless nature manifested at a very young age, and those around him saw it, including Eric. No wonder he told fans that Eric is the reason I am an actor. 
While he was still studying at RADA, Finney made an initial TV show where he interpreted the character of Mr Hardcastle in Oliver Goldsmith's She Stoops to Conquer. After the BBC aired the performances at a London theatre, Finney had an early exposure, and by the time he left the school it was easy for him to join the Royal Shakespeare Company. Soon critics were addressing him as the new Laurence Olivier in town, with his commanding presence, he was said to have cheered up the British stage. Notable columnists and cinema critics of British extraction had labelled the young Finney as a smouldering young Spencer Tracy, and had warned famous British star Richard Burton about the advent of a promising competition in the person of Albert. When Finney was given a contract by the rank organisation, he turned it down just so he can perform for the Birmingham Rep, where he kick-started properly his acting career. Young and energetic Finney was determined to make his name his way, perhaps was not interested in running Hollywood shows, and would not bother himself with its conventional stardom. Otherwise, he would once describe the fact that after doing a broad screen test for a chance to play the title role in director David Lean's classic Lawrence of Arabia, Finney still turned down the offer. That action was an opportunistic one for young and fellow RADA graduate, Peter O'Toole to capitalise on. The role would become O'Toole's career-defining role, though Finney was not bothered because he knew that it was a matter of time before stardom came his way. After doing a few productions, Finney in 1958 appeared first on the London stage in Jane Arden's The Party, which was directed by Charles Lawton, who also featured in the production alongside his wife Elsa Lanchester. He continued to exercise highly energetic performances until he became a movie sensation, with that historic role as cheerful, funny and carnal 18th century English scallywag in Tom Jones. The role brought Finney unprecedented fame and made him more popular among his American audience. Moviegoers kept talking about his lusty blue eye, a fresh leading man was born, even as the movie also took home a Best Picture Oscar and became a major hit. For director Tony Richardson, the aim of producing Tom Jones is simply to create an enjoyable romp with no social significance, no contemporary problems, just a lot of colourful, sexy fun. That production was more like a dream come true for young Finney. It brought him fame and financial increase as he was fortunate enough to have gotten in the pink a percentage of the profits from the wonder hit. To say the obvious, the movie gave him the financial security he needed to succeed in life, even though he was still in his twenties. Finney came from a humble background and became wealthy at a very young age. In his view, Quentin Falk who wrote an unauthorised biography about him, noted that the movie brought him a lot of side benefits. He's a man who likes to live as well as to act, enjoy his wine and cigars. He's his own man. I find that rather admirable, he stated. Interestingly, amid his Tom Jones fame, rather than cashing in on his services, which were very hot in demand, more lucrative film offers rolled in, one after the other. Finney took an extended leave and engaged in travelling across the US and Mexico and returned to the London stage to continue in stage productions. His boisterous career did not go unnoticed in the media circle, which is why when the news of his death came, almost every reputable media had a say on his unique acting career life. Remarkably, Albert Finney is not your usual party freak of an actor, even though he was in a mix of celebrity glamour. Someone once described him as a stay-at-home actor, and when asked why he prefers his quiet moments against an outgoing lifestyle, he was quoted to have said, It's a long way to go just to sit in a non-drinking, non-smoking environment on the off chance your name is called. Fans praised Finney for his kind of personality. He tried his best to stay out of the limelight, even though he was constantly in the spotlight. He was no doubt a great actor with a great career and lifestyle. Talking about the actor's role selection style in the industry, Finney's agent and lawyer, Nigel Bennett, once said that he can be extra choosy about the roles that he agrees to take, adding that it poses difficulty to film producers. And he won't even read a script unless the film is fully financed, he stated. Finney's successful and particularly lengthy career will also be warmly thought of for his performances in Saturday Night and Sunday Morning, Big Fish, plus numerous awards. 
Candidly described as a creative, honest and constantly convincing actor who made his every film worth watching, Finney may just be the true benchmark other actors are judged against, because very few, if any, could square up with his charm and charisma as an acting prodigy. Perhaps I should also join millions of his fans to say that he was a man of principle. His towering presence is yet to be matched. Finney is one man who rarely talked about his personal life, but somehow I got to learn why he never bothered to attend any of the Academy Awards, even when he was part of the event being a nominee for the top prize. It seems silly to go over there and beg for an award, he was quoted to have said. Quite an interesting comment from a man who knows how to handle his affairs. Finney famously maintained a healthy cynicism about the British authority, which may not be unconnected to the reason he turned down a knighthood when he had the opportunity to receive the honour. Refusing to be elevated to the honourable status of Sir Albert Finney is one of the defining moments of his character, as one who does only what he believes was right, and of course he did not have faith in such honours. When confronted on why he had to reject the Sir recognition, Finney wondered why it should be an issue, saying, Maybe people in America think being a Sir is a big deal. He still believes that everybody should be addressed as Misters. I think the Sir thing slightly perpetuates one of our diseases in England, which is snobbery, he was quoted. Finney thinks that it makes England old-fashioned, which he is not a great fan of. I heard that he even turned down the Queen, refusing first to CBE before the knighthood. What then made this great talent happy, and how did he enjoy his wealth, you may be asking? Friends and close associates said Finney perfectly enjoyed his fortune his way. He owned racehorses, a hobby he enjoyed right from childhood, and said to have always visited the track with his father back in the day. He also had a taste for cars, often seen cruising his Rolls Royce and a chauffeur on call. He would be driven around town to some high-class restaurants and often invited to join Who Is Who's at a party. Finney particularly loved dining and wines. Funnily, observers say you can see the effect of the treats he usually gives himself on his waistline. Even with his remarkable display of extraordinary talent in critically acclaimed television shows, including his depiction of the Pope, Finney's private life remarkably remained quiet in the media, even though a section of the British press was fascinated at some point with his marriage to the sultry French film icon Anu Camille. His outstanding performance as a southern attorney in the movie Erin Brockovich, which also featured Julia Roberts, analysts say helped introduce him to a fresh generation of fans. Talking about the movie, Finney said, I think it's a good film. He initially thought that acting as a California lawyer shouldn't be a difficult task, but he soon realised that it was more complicated than he imagined. The on-screen romance between the elderly lawyer and his beautiful young and hostile assistant won Finney yet another Oscar nod, but this time in Best Supporting Actor category. His act in the movie may have helped his co-star Julia to grab her first Best Actress Oscar medal, and still Finney was resolute in his decision not to attend any Academy Award ceremony, and never did. A move analysts say destroyed his chances of being nominated in the future for cold-shouldering Hollywood's elite community. Finney had a wonderful time with beautiful women, including famous ladies like Audrey Hepburn, Joan Baez, Carly Simon, Billy Whitelaw, Jacqueline Bizet and Shelley Winters, just to mention. Married three times, first to actress Jane Wenham in a marriage that failed after about eight years. His union with Anouk Ami also ended in divorce. At the time of his demise, Finney is survived by his last wife, Penelope Delmage. The couple lived together for about 30 years. He also had a son from his first marriage to Wenham. Finney had a magnetic outlook in his private life. He once told fans that he is born flirt, that will never stop, but that he would take things no further. I am loyal and content, he had said, referring to his last marriage, which lasted till his death. Finney's marriage to Penelope, who at the time worked as a travel representative, looked more like a fulfilling kind of marriage, considering how long they stayed together. After making his American television debut, Finney was quoted to have said in an interview that, I often wondered why I am an actor, referring to the profession as a very public form of escape. I think I am always watching and balancing, sort of tabulating my own emotions, adding that the only way I can lose myself is when I'm acting. 
Albert Finney died of a chest infection at age 82 after treating cancer for years. But before you go, get ready to uncover another captivating story. In our next video, we delve into the enigmatic allure of Anne Bancroft and the mysterious fear she instilled in men.